Father, we just want to give you thanks for this time. We want to thank you for each one of you here. We just ask, Father, this morning that you be with our nation and be with our leaders and be with those that make decisions that affect each and every one of us. We just ask that you be, lead them to do and say the right thing for our people. We ask that you be with those that couldn't be present with us this morning, those that were sick and had some kind of difficulty. We just ask that you be with them. And we ask you to be with Brother Bob as he brings the message. And we ask all these things in Christ's name. Amen. Amen.
centuries ago and basically said the same thing that Jesus says to everyone today and even when he was alive follow me you get up he told Abram pick up all you've got and bring all of your people and I will tell you where I want you to go isn't that still what he's saying to us today? Well, today's really going to be different for a sermon. A few years ago, I wrote a short story about Christmas. It's in three parts, so the next two Sundays 
after today, you'll get to hear the rest of the story. If I may borrow a phrase, a familiar phrase. And I've just entitled it a Jewish love story. And it's fictional with facts. Uh, and so um, I trust that it'll be a blessing to you and that it will... Um, that you see a part of me maybe that you haven't seen before. A Jewish love story. There once was a boy named Joseph. And he lived in a town not that far from Jerusalem. He was somewhat quiet for his age, but for the most part, he was a normal boy and engaged playing with his friends and going to the synagogue to be schooled in the Hebrew ways of life. And most importantly, that God should be placed at the center of life and that all decisions made in life must be based on what God says is the right way to live. Things like trusting God is the basis of all wisdom. God first, family, people, and relationships second, and honest work and career last. His father was skilled with his hands and would work with wood and stone and build things. Sometimes he would build houses and sometimes he would build furniture. Joseph was always anxious for the day when he would be allowed to handle some of those tools and build things like his dad. Joseph was very proud of his father because his skills were always in demand and one time he was even asked to build a large table for the head of the Roman guard in Jerusalem. The Romans were everywhere. They were always telling people what to do and collecting money for what they were always calling taxes, but everyone knew that a lot of the taxes, quote, end quote, went into the pockets of the collectors. A man named Caesar Augustus was the king of the whole world at the time, and he lived in Rome, Italy. Joseph figured that he, that must be where all the taxes went. There was another king named Herod that lived in Jerusalem. But the Roman Senate had voted and made him king of the Jews. Joseph guessed that some of the tax money probably went to him there because he was always building things and he had heard that he had even built a new temple in Jerusalem. When he was five years old, one of his neighbors had a daughter born to their family and he didn't think that it was such a big deal at the time, but a couple of years later, he saw her playing with some of the other small children and he thought to himself, quote, I've never seen such a pretty girl before. She has a beautiful smile and he thought that he remembered that her name was Mary. Time went on and he would see her occasionally, but it was no big deal. There was always a pleasantness that came to his mind whenever he would see her. Days grew into years and she became old enough to go to the market and get water from the city water supply. So he would see her more often and she was beginning to get taller and older and he had become old enough to start looking at girls in a different light. After all, he was 18 and he had become quite skilled as a carpenter and mason like his father. Before long, he would be on his own and ready to begin a new adventure in life as a family man. Only one thing was more important to Joseph than the normal everyday things of life that was his relationship with Yahweh. He had learned all the things that a Jewish young man was supposed to know to become a man. And along with that, he knew that a Messiah would come and he would be the king of the whole world, not Caesar. Somehow in his heart, he felt that God was going to bring to pass this very soon and he prayed often for God not to wait any longer. He longed for the day when the Savior would relieve the pressure that the Romans were putting on the people. He wondered often, how is God going to make this happen? 
the Romans were ruthless and taxed the people so heavily that there was hardly any way a person could pay taxes and make a living at the same time. Mary had reached the age of 15, and under her mother's instruction, she had become a woman who had learned that Yahweh was not just the God of choice in their home. She learned that he took interest in every aspect of life and that he could be trusted to aid a person with the decisions that one has to make in everyday life. It, would, it could truly be said that Mary had become a person that trusted God with everything. The fact that Mary had grown into a beautiful young woman had not gone unnoticed by a young neighbor named Joseph. The glances between the two young people had gotten more and more frequent. It was quite obvious that something was going to happen. Then the conversation started. It got more and more serious until one day Joseph could no longer wait. Soon he went to Mary's father and asked him for his permission to officially, officially court Mary with the expressed intent that they would become engaged and eventually marry. So they began the official courtship, and Joseph was a very happy young man. After all, he felt that he had found the most beautiful girl in the world, and that she had agreed to become his wife and partner in life. Life is very good, he said to himself. Mary was feeling so fortunate that a man with the integrity of Joseph and already successful in his chosen field, had chosen her as his bride-to-be. She had watched him for years as they were growing up and had always thought that he was a handsome boy and a young man. She had noticed him noticing her, and she in her heart was very glad because she had secretly hoped that someday he would become more than just a friendly neighbor. They were two young, beautiful, very happy people. Meanwhile, in another part of Israel, Judah, there was something else going on in another part of Mary's family. She had a cousin named Elizabeth who lived in another town. Her husband, Zechariah, was a priest at the temple in Jerusalem when while he was fulfilling his ministry duties, burning incense on behalf of the people who came to worship, an angel named Gabriel came to him in the temple where he was burning incense. He was very afraid. The angel told him not to be afraid and that God had sent him with a message of good news. The news was that the prayer that he had been praying for years was finally going to be answered. Elizabeth, his wife, was going to conceive and bring a son into the world. This son would be the one that God would use to prepare the way for the Messiah. He would never drink beer or wine. He would be filled with the Holy Spirit even while in his mother's womb. He would preach to the people so that they would know that the Messiah would soon come and that many of their hearts would be turned back to God and be prepared to receive him when he comes. Keep in mind that Zachariah and Elizabeth were well along in years. Elizabeth had not been able to have children, and while this was looked down upon in Jewish society as some kind of punishment from God, God was telling Zechariah that a miracle was going to happen in their lives. Zechariah and Elizabeth lived very righteous lives and were looked upon quite favorably by God, but even as a serious follower of God, Zechariah said, how can I know this is true? I am an old man, and my wife is also well along in years. Gabriel then told Zechariah that since he did not receive the message from God, he would not be able to speak again until the child was born. Zechariah then went out to where the people were praying and waiting for him to tell them the words that God had given him to tell them, but he could not speak. And the people knew that he had seen a vision. A short time later, Zechariah's week on duty, of on duty time at the temple was finished, and he returned home to Elizabeth, and in due time she became pregnant, just as the angel had said. 
She said, the Lord has done this to take away my disgrace among the people. She kept herself hidden for five months. And when she was six months along, Mary, her cousin, paid her a visit. And an amazing thing happened. Back in Nazareth, Mary had gotten in the habit of taking walks, and sometimes she would sit in the shade of a tree and ponder the future with Joseph. While, will he like my cooking? Will I be a good mother? Then she would break into a smile when she thought how much she loved him and how much he loved Yahweh and her. One day on one of these daily moments, a bright and shining man named Gabriel, an angel sent from God, came and told her that Yahweh had a very special favor to ask of her because he knew her heart. And she was perfect for the special days ahead. Let's read what the angel Gabriel said to this precious young Jewish woman. This is Luke 1, 28 through 38, verse 26. In the sixth month, angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man named Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came to her and said, Rejoice, favored woman, the Lord is with you. She was deeply troubled by this statement, wondering what kind of greeting this could be. Then the angel told her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Now listen. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will call his name Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom will have no end. Mary asked the angel, how can this be since I've not been intimate with a man? The angel replied to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the only one to be born will be called the Son of God. And then consider your relative Elizabeth. Even she has conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month for her who was called childless. For nothing will be impossible with God. Mary replied, I am the Lord's slave. May it be done unto me according to your word. Then the angel left her. I would say this morning as we've heard this part of the story that God, could I be more like Mary? so willing and so open that if you came to me with such a drastic revelation, how would I receive it? Could I be more like Mary and just be open and say, I am God's slave and will do whatever he says. But there's something very important that went on next that I want to read from Scripture. It's about what Elizabeth said to Mary as we close. Now Mary rose in those days and went to the hill country with haste to a city of Judah and entered the house of Zacharias and greeted Elizabeth. And it happened when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary that the babe leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit, and she spoke out with a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. But why is this granted to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? 
For indeed, as, indeed, as soon as the voice of your greeting sounded in my ears, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. Blessed is she who believed, for there will be fulfillment of those things which were told her from the Lord. The Lord speaks to us in all kinds of ways. It's amazing to me that at least on a weekly basis, as I'm observing the way life has gone day after day after day, how the Lord has spoken through circumstance, and the Lord has spoken through some of you to me. And often he speaks to me through my wife, and that's not a joke. He uses her to protect me in a lot of ways. He uses her to open my mind to what he's saying a lot of times, that I'm not listening to him. But I think the lesson for us today from this passage, from this story, is Lord, help me listen. I've got a lot of ideas and a lot of thoughts and things I want to get done and things I want to do, and I've got lots of plans. And those are not bad. As long as we take time to listen make sure that as we move forward, we're moving forward in the name of Jesus. I trust that this first investment in this little short story was a blessing to you. And um, I knew that it would be a different morning. It's not really a sermon, but it is a message. And I trust that, that you were blessed by it. So let's stand together. Is there another word before we leave? What are we singing? Okay. How about God still moves? God still moves in the hearts of His people. God still moves and He speaks. He does not speak, nor does He smile. to relate to it and help us Lord during the season of your birth and help us Lord to be kind and forgiving and to reach out to others and Lord just be with uh, our leaders of our country and just be with uh, those Lord that do not know you and help us Lord to do things that please you and just bless each one that is here this morning and just thank you for your love for we ask it in your name. Amen. Amen.